Hey guys, it's Frankie. Welcome to the Think Tank. So this morning I'm going to go over um, the comparison that some people are putting out between Brian Koberger and Ted Bundy. So I did go through and I grabbed onto a couple of things that I thought, you know, might give us an idea what people are thinking when there is this kind of comparison. I personally think that a couple of uh, Ted Bundy's attacks were very much like this attack Brian Koberger did on the U of I students. So, you know, one thing about Bundy, by the time he got into these larger sorority houses, he had already done this quite a few times. So let's check this out. So it's saying that the brutal deaths of four university students have captured the attention of the nation. Isn't that the truth? But two survivors of the notorious serial Ted Bundy warn his attacks bear an eerie resemblance to the FSU sorority house killings. Oh my God, my tongue just trips over it when I've got to start eliminating and being creative as to what some of these... Uh, <laughs> words I can morph into the same kind of words like this that I can't say. All of these uh, rules that we have here on uh, YouTube is crazy. So let's get back to this. There have been a lot of uh, large-scale deaths, but Kobergers seemed to almost have picked out a case or a situation that was much like Bundy's attacks. So is there coincidence or is this something he's doing intentionally? Because he's also being compared to BTK, isn't he? So the criminology PhD student accused of the home invasion of the four university undergrads was indicted by a grand jury earlier this month. So earlier in May, he's accused of sneaking into a uh, town rental home around 4 a.m. and unaliving Kaylee Goncavs, Madison Mogan, Zaina Kernodal, and Ethan Japin. When the news broke about the Bundy attacks, survival Cheryl Thomas said reports brought her back to the events of January 15th, 1978. And, you know, this is a scary damn thing. There are similarities. Let's see here. What does Nancy have to say? This guy's such a POS. Now, if it's long, we won't watch all of it, but we'll kind of peek through. You know, I don't know how a person can properly compare some of these attacks because similar things happen when they're large scale. So we don't know if it's following the paths of another person that may have done this or if a person's getting just plain ideas from different types of previous cases. I don't know. Gabby Petito case. Brian Laundrie's mother is breaking her silence to Fox News Digital okay. after a disturbing. Well, we'll have to look at that one later because that is something else. But as to why it's on this page, I don't know. <laughs> so she did say it brings back that memory when she managed to just barely survive Bundy's attack. So early in the morning of January 15th, we know the. Bundy, well, not all of us know, I guess. Uh, Bundy broke into the Chi Omega sorority house in Florida at the State's University where he attacked a lot of young ladies in their sorority house. He bludgeoned four at the house and it left two of them unalived. While police rushed to the Chi Omega house, Bundy had fled the scene and ended up breaking into a nearby duplex where he attacked Thomas in her own bed. So she says, the neighbors heard I was being attacked. They heard moaning, so they called 
and they could hear through the wall my phone ringing. I didn't answer, so they called again, and they heard, and they heard running. So at that point, he was running out and getting out through the kitchen window. Nine one one was called, and uh, they're saying that was basically because the sounds were just too weird. So okay, this is somebody that is on an adjoining kind of wall and they're saying or she's saying that in the middle of the night she heard these sounds and she called 911 because it was just too weird so how do we make sense of the fact that this attack that Koberger allegedly did on November 13th how did people in that exact same house not hear weird sounds? And why did they not call 911? Wow. You see, this is just one of the biggest questions yet. What happened in those eight or so hours? When asked how Koberger's alleged uh, attacks mirrored Bundy's, she said he broke into the house. Bundy broke into the house. And it went kind of systematically from one person to the next. The 28-year-old Washington State PhD student was charged with the four counts of first degree and we know felony burglary for sneaking into that house. So it does say for over a month, police and law enforcement were relatively silent on their search for the suspect, but they did arrest Brian at his parents' house on December 30th, 2022. And Bundy broke into the sorority houses and duplex, attacking the victims and escaping without a trace for weeks. So Ted Bundy's former lawyer, John Henry Brown, noted in the special that in both of the Idaho and Bundy cases, rage seems to play a central role. It's so random and the manner of the attack was so brutal. I've done probably 50 cases in my career, maybe more. And these are the only two that give those similarities. Almost all of them involve weapons, but guns mostly or fistfights, things like that self-defense the eyes of these two monsters on freaking real you know that ted bundy was just super creative used a log to attack both thomas and Pryor, while koberger used that pointy object to stab and alive these kids you see it's hard to like follow all these rules <laughs> Oh, my God. Okay, so let's see here. Oh, that's true. They both had vehicles that they could look at and scour through. So Bundy eventually did confess to at least 30 attacks, and he was executed in 1989. I'll never forget that time. I'll never. Um, what were they saying? Turn off your lights, save the voltage for Bundy, save the electricity for Bundy. Okay. If you are type two and take metformin, well, check your feet and legs for these two things that I'm going to show you. Let's go to Mercedes Coleman. She is on the phone with us as, as well. Mercedes, I don't know how much of a chance you've had to go through this uh, affidavit for a search warrant. Uh, again, one of the things that I thought was very curious is that they're looking up internet, mm -hmm. they're looking to see if Koberger had any internet searches uh, to review other murders or violence, right. assault, uh, violent assault, stabbings, or cutting of other people, as well as how to avoid detection after the commission of such crimes. Uh, I mean, obviously, the indications are that this was premeditated. Is, is this a standard thing that uh, police do with a search warrant, or could this be specifically keyed? Uh, to some information that they may have about Coburg. 
Yeah, that's a great question, John. First, I, it really is about what they're used to routinely, routinely do in these types of cases. They're going to look for digital evidence. There's a treasure trove that exists. Are there? So what do you guys think of that? All the evidence that they've got as far as digital evidence. Do you think it'll be enough if they don't have more DNA? Direct messaging to any of the, of the victims. There have been reports early on that he had actually had already been connected to at least Kaylee Gonzalez. That's what uh, Mr. Gonzalez, her father, had said early on, mm -hmm. that there may mm. have been some connection. And that connection could certainly be established through social media, direct messaging that can happen on various platforms there. But so, looking at the digital So I'll have to look back. I thought he said something about it. What that the stalking issue was no longer something that they were looking at as far as Kaylee went. But it's, if, it, if it is a connection that he has with some criminal case in the background, well, we know that he's got an extensive background in criminology. A lot of that he's already probably done and studied in school, but what they're mostly focusing in on and whether or not there was anything regarding disposing of evidence, some concealing mm. of evidence, we know that the butchery was so extreme and there must have been a significant cleanup after the murders. And we know how these poor individuals, these kids were murdered, which is just devastating just to think about it. Yeah. It was such extreme butchery. So they're looking for digital evidence about what do you do? How do you clean your car? Mm -hmm. The fact that he left there and drove in his car and by all... So they are saying that any cleanup attempts by Koberger can probably still be um tested i heard that someone one of them said that um regardless of the technique used to clean out a vehicle that the um how do i how do i word this they can't hide everything even if they think they have they can't it doesn't matter what they clean the place with let's see here i just don't know I know he's, in my mind, he's guilty of sin. And I think they've got enough, but. Okay, so those two. Okay, let's see here. Both had chilling similarities in their interests that hinted at crimes. So there is quite a bit on Reddit as far as this stuff goes. I don't usually use that as a source because a lot of it tends to be people's, um, opinions, right? So before we carry on here, if you're not a subscriber, please hit that subscribe button and the thumbs up if you're enjoying the content and a thumbs down if you just think I suck. <laughs> <clears throat> All right. So Bundy, who was roughly the same age as Koberger at the time of his first attacks, spent some time as assistant director of the Seattle Prevention Advisory Commission in Olympia, Washington, where he wrote a pamphlet for women on um, our word prevention. And what did what did Koberger do? He put out something to get people to say how they felt when they did a crime. What was it like building up to it? What they feel like after it? So yeah, I'd say that's similar. So the most chilling comparison, however, is their likenesses in a side-by-side -side comparison of their mugshots posted on social media. Both men have similar hairstyles, eyebrows, and the same thin lips. Never trust someone with no lips, uh, gaunt cheekbones, and matching ears. I'm creeped out by the similarities with Bundy. Both studied psychology, criminology at University of Washington. I was a Chi Omega sorority member in the 90s and we never forgot what Ted did. Though a little though little is known about the motivations driving the Idaho attacks, the nature of the crimes drew comparison to Bundy well before photos were released. In early December, John Henry Brown, Bundy's one-time attorney, told news outlets that he believed there were numerous similarities between Idaho and in what Bundy did. 
just the randomness of it is actually something that does stand out. Of course, most of Ted's misbehavior was random. There were times when Ted would follow people and then decide not to attack them. And this was his way of exercising his grandiosity. You know, I can control life. Oh my God. You know, I will never forget. Bundy was probably the one of the very first that I started to jump into. Uh, the area is really not that far from where I am in Canada. So I was always, yeah, really curious as to what would make a person do this, how we got away with it. I mean, if you remember, Bundy went to that uh, lake, picked up one person, unalive them, and then went back to that same lake and got more people, more ladies. And all of them were basically found in pretty close proximity to each other. So I just want to see what we got going here. I'll take a quick look through this. So friends, as you know, when I'm not doing regulars and I'm a little bit um, off kilter, it's just a fibro day, but hopefully I'm still getting you the content that you appreciate. Okay, let's go here. What do you guys think about this Bundy comparison? Okay, let's just see here. Check out Oxygen. No value or volume, no volume due to the music. Justice is coming. May they rest in peace. Okay, let's see here if we can find. So what do you guys think? Empty damn eyes. They were making a comparison to the eyebrows. I think Goldbergers are still kind of. The empty eyes they share. Looks like he's had his nose broken. No lips. These guys have no lips. Similar hair. Well, I don't know if it's similar hair or it's just that they both have short hair. As information about Koberger began to emerge, his mugshot and candid court arrival photos began circulating across media, leading many observers, especially who shared their interest in the case online, to draw comparisons between Koberger and the notoriously prolific 1970s serial Ted Bundy. So... Who is Brian Koberger? So both Brian Koberger and Bundy are were both college educated. That was part of the reason and the fact that Bundy was trying to get into politics that kind of covered his butt. And Bun and uh, Koberger seems to be hoping to have the same kind of cover, but 
No. Yeah, this is something else. Anne Rule wrote a book about this. I think it was called A Stranger Beside Me. It says that Bundy even worked as a Washington undergraduate at the Unaliving Hotline Crisis Center in Seattle. And from what we've heard, some of these calls were addresses were taken and Bundy showed up. The extent of Bundy's 1970s spree will never fully be known. Because basically, he was all over the U.S. Not so much Koberger. We know that Koberger's undergraduate studies focused on psychology. Also first of, at Northampton Community College in Bethlehem, Pennsylvania, where he obtained a 2018 associate degree in the subject. In my 10 years of teaching, I've only recommended two students to a PhD program, and he was one of them. DeSales Associate Professor Michelle Bolger confided to the Daily Mail. So, okay, these guys, they've got all of these degrees and masters and doctorates, and they were in close proximity to Kohlberger, some of them daily because they were their instructors. How did these people not identify him as a predator? How did he get away with that? I mean, he's he, it's not like um, Kohlberger is normal. He's a kind of an odd duck. He seems to stand out. I find it interesting because they're talking here again about the exterior, exterior similarities between Koberger and Bundy. From They're saying here from the clean cut short hair, drawn facial features, and those eyes. So, yeah. Okay, let's see here. I just want to make sure that I'm not finding anything else really quick here for you. So what do you guys think about the similarities or these being called similarities? In my opinion, again, there are certain similarities and then there are certain things that are not so much. Not so much. Ted Bundy got away with this for a long time. A long, long time. And I don't know. I still believe there's some kind of history out there that we're going to find on Koberger. But again, Ted Bundy got away with this for a long time. His first name was even out there. Ted with the Volkswagen Beetle. There was a lot of descriptors out there. And then after he was arrested, he started escaping. And then he would go out and he would attack more people. And he'd be arrested again. And then finally in Florida, after he attacked, I think her name was Kimberly Leach. She was young. I do believe nine, ten years old. That got him the DP. And back in 1989, I do believe, his life was taken by the government for these completely atrocious attacks. So do you guys think that possibly Kohlberger is going to get the same kind of treatment? If he's guilty, proven guilty, should he turn off, should he uh, heat up old Sparky? Or they've also talked about in that area about having a firing squad. What do you guys think of that? <laughs> you know what? We're going to continue to learn more and we're going to learn more slowly as we've talked about in other videos, other lives. Things are coming out slow and steady. And we're at the point now where we've got a trial date for Koberger. I think we're looking at October 2nd at this point. So what are we going to learn between now and October? 
There will be, I'm sure, more little appearances, if not by him, than by his lawyers as they get ready for trial. Whatever they show live or even um, release after the session, I'll get that out to you as fast as I can. This case is, um, it's heart-wrenching. So guys, I'm going to jump off and thank you so much for being here with me. If you haven't hit that subscribe and like, please do. And I'll absolutely see you in the next one. Bye.